everybody. Move it up just a little bit. All right, everybody's got their sheet. I've got mine. Do you have yours? Okay. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we'll sing two verses of Let Me Learn of Jesus. A couple weeks ago, I got this out of the blue email from two brothers, both in college, both of them sons of a fellow pastor, he's a pastor in Iowa, and his two boys were on their spring break and they were doing the thing where you go around Lake Michigan and see the sights. And these two boys were wondering if they could spend the night at our house, at the parsonage up in Marinette. And part of the reason for their trip, one of them is graduating from college, and he is very interested in a career in shipbuilding. And I said, well, you have come to the right place if you want to stay in Marinette, Wisconsin with me because we have Marinette Marine right outside our back door. And he had never heard of the place. I guess he was just using us for lodging. I don't know. But I explained to him, you know, Marinette, pretty good town if you're interested in shipbuilding. And so these two brothers came and they spent the night with us and I showed them around a little bit. And so there is this interest in shipbuilding that's still out there. I'd like to go back in time a little bit and tell you a story about someone else who was interested in shipbuilding. The year was 1697, just a few years ago. 1697. And the place was in a country called the Netherlands. Some people call this country Holland. It's right there on the North Sea. And it was a town called Zondam. That's what it was called, Zondam, the Netherlands. And in the year 1697, a man from Russia showed up to learn how to build ships. Now his name, I'll say it in Russian for you once, okay? His name was Pyotr Mikhailov. Isn't that wonderful? Pyotr Mikhailov. We can call him Peter Michaels, all right? Because that's what his name means, Peter Michaels. So here's this guy named Peter Michaels, and he shows up, and what do they speak in the Netherlands? What language do they speak in the Netherlands? Do you know? Dutch. Makes sense, right? If you're from the Netherlands, you speak Dutch. Okay? Well, this guy, Right, exactly. Well, this guy didn't speak Dutch much, but that's okay. All right? The people, the Dutch workers, they welcomed this guy with open arms for a few reasons. One is he was six foot eight. Okay? He was six foot eight. You can picture how tall that is. So this was a big guy. You didn't mess with him, okay? They could see that he was genuinely interested in learning the art of shipbuilding. From day one, he worked harder than any of them. And he learned their language, and he learned their craft. He ate what they ate. He drank what they drank. He lived just like one of them. 
And he spent over a year with them, working very hard, learning everything he could about building ships. We don't know if those workers in Zondam ever found out who Peter Michaels really was. But Peter Michaels was the king of Russia, what they called the Tsar, the emperor of Russia. And his name actually was Pyotr Mikhailov, but he went by Peter the Great. That's how he has come down to us in history. His name was Peter the Great. See, what he did was, you know, Russia, kind of in the news a lot these days, right? But Russia is the largest country on earth. In fact, Pastor Serge and I were talking about daylight savings time before you got here. You know your time zones, right? And how we have eastern time zones, central time zone. There are 11 time zones in Russia. That's how big a country it is, okay? And one thing Russia did not have when Peter became king, Russia did not have a navy. It had all this seacoast and all these port cities, but it had no way of protecting itself. No one knew how to build those kinds of ships. And the king didn't leave it to anyone else to find out, okay? So he left... His palace, he left his royal robes, his crown, all those things that kings wear, and he put on the clothes of a guy working in the shipyard, and he lived like someone who works in a shipyard and learned what he could, all so that he could defend his people, so that he could build a navy and defend his country. Now you see on your sheet that the message today, the theme is from rags to riches. But I'm telling you the story of Peter the Great for a reason, which is, you know, rags to riches stories, we can find them everywhere, okay? The athlete who gets the million dollar contract, the movie star who makes millions of dollars, many of those people come from nothing. They don't come from wealthy families or say an inventor or a business person hits on a million dollar idea. Doesn't mean they were rich to begin with. There are all kinds of rags to riches stories. What makes Peter the Great's different is that it's riches to rags and back to riches. He leaves the riches behind and he lives like a regular working man. Then he goes back to being king. All right, now look at our text for today. Philippians chapter two, uh, words of the apostle Paul. Jesus made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death. Jesus is the Son of God and the King of Kings, and he left all that. He left his heavenly kingdom to come into our world not only to take on flesh and blood as you and I have flesh and blood, to be a true person, a true man, but to live as a servant, to live in humility. See, we can't forget that Jesus as a human being could have lived a lot better and a lot more comfortable than he did. But we know right away because of the Christmas story that wasn't the case. Nobody made room for him at the inn, and what was Jesus' first crib? A manger, okay? Jesus lived humbly. You know, his father wasn't a king. His father was a carp. you know, Joseph. His fa- Joseph was a carpenter in Nazareth. There's nothing wealthy, there's nothing royal about his life. And we know Jesus didn't have a comfortable life when he walked around Israel with his disciples. And most of all, there's the death that he suffered on a cross. But Jesus was willing to do all that. He was willing to humble himself and give that perfect obedience to his Father that you and I cannot give. And so what did God do? God exalted him, raised him up, and Jesus ascended into heaven. God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus... Every knee should bow. Jesus' perfect obedience counts as ours 
by faith. And Jesus lives to bless us with his righteousness. He shares the riches he won by his perfect life and innocent death with all of us. And we receive those blessings by faith. So Jesus, you know, riches to rags to riches. The rags to riches, from rags to riches, that's our story. That's your story and mine. Because we were born dead in our sins, poor in spirit, unable to give God the good works he demands. But by God's grace and through faith, Jesus has given us his perfect obedience. And that means we have the greatest riches of all. We have the forgiveness of sins, we have the favor of God, and we have life everlasting all in Jesus' name. So that's the rags to riches story, what Jesus has done for us. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being a servant in our place. Your humility and death made it possible for us to live glorious lives in heaven with you. Teach us to be humble in all that we do. Help us to be willing servants so that our lives will praise and glorify your name. Amen. All right, we'll sing two verses of What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Continue by reading responsively Psalm 66. Shout with joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. Come and see what God has done. How awesome his works in man's behalf. All right, we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, we'll gather the offering. Which verse are we singing? First two. First two? Okay. Stand by one. Children, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.